Probably one of the most important assets for 3D artists are vegetation assets, from trees, grass, and all sorts of plants. So in today's video, I will go over some of the best asset libraries and add-ons in 2025. I mean the new ones and updates to the top ones in this field, which you probably missed. But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Super Hive Market is having a sale right now with discounts on thousands of products, including add-ons, procedural geometry note tools, courses, material packs, you name it. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. Without further ado, let's jump right in. We're gonna start with Botanic, which is kind of the OG big plant library for Blender. It is essentially a huge and an expanding collection of trees, plants, and even scattering presets, which has been around since 2019. As of 2025, they are up to Botanic 7.1, and this update alone dropped a whopping 405 new assets, including about 209 new plant models, in addition to dozens of new scatter patterns and curve assets. The 7.1 update also adds a cool new feature. You can now filter the library's plants by geographical location, literally clicking on a world map to show species native to a certain region. This version actually expanded Botanic's global coverage, with biomes from South Africa, Australia, Africa, and so on, on top of the huge variety it already had. In total, Botanic now offers over 1,000 assets, ranging from trees like deciduous, coniferous, palms, and so on, in addition to shrubs, grasses, flowers, and even rocks, which are optimized with wind animation options. So as you can see, this add-on is regularly updated, with more than 25 updates so far, and it remains the go-to add-on for many Blender artists who need a quick and easy way to add realistic greenery to their scenes. The next add-on I want to talk about is called Tree Vegetation, which is a long-running plant library add-on by B Production. And they also have add-ons like Grass Blade, Forestation, in addition to Gardener, if you want to check them out. So Tree Vegetation version 6, released in August 2025, takes it to the next level by making it more of a comprehensive collection of trees, plants, and shrubs, all built to be highly realistic and easy to use inside Blender. And I think one of the standout features is its build for season system. You can basically instantly swap a tree or a plant between summer, autumn, and spring variants with one click. This means you can have lush green foliage, full colors, or bare snow dusted branches without manually tweaking materials. And the add-on handles the shader and the geometry changes for each season. It also lets you add animation to the vegetation. Branches and leaves can sway naturally, and you can dial in wind strength or use included presets for gentle breeze versus strong winds, in addition to other things. Version 6 of the add-on introduced two new categories of plants, and the developers mentioned adding fruit trees in addition to succulents, and roughly 130 new plant assets for the library, which already contains a diverse range from tropical palms to garden hedges. As you can see, the interface is beginner-friendly, with tools like one-click snap to ground for placing trees on terrains. Generally speaking, I think tree vegetation offers an all-in-one help for plant models, especially now when it has the seasonal variation and animation stuff. So for creators who need a lot of vegetation, this can be of great value. Before we jump into other vegetation add-ons, I want to mention GeoScatter, especially version 5.5 because now it is a feature-packed Blender add-on for scattering vegetation and other objects as well. And I would say this is really important for creating environments. So if you are an environment artist, this will be of great interest to you. As I said, it is not a vegetation library, but I would say at this point, it is a must in combination with vegetation and plant libraries. So version 5.5 introduces some interesting new tools, including three new distribution modes. For example, a curve-based Bezier area scatter for huge terrains, and an empties mode for precise placement, in addition to a set of manual scattering brushes, master delete, line scatter, etc., which makes fine-tuning placements a lot easier and faster. It also adds an ecosystem density slider to focus your scatter on dense versus sparse regions, in addition to new smoothing options to iron out bumpy terrains, and even the proximity imprint feature for dynamic collisions. On top of that, GeoScatter still offers the staple features that made it popular in the first place. Now with new add-ons that came in 2025, we have BF2B, 
which means plant factory to blender. This one is a handy new bridge that lets you import Eon's plant factory vegetation assets straight into blender with a minimal hassle. It comes back with over 200 plant species and 10,000 presets or procedural, so we can spawn unique trees and plants with a lot of ease. The developer has been actively updating the add-on, and recently they have added features like support for multiple levels of detail or LODs to control polygon counts on important plants, in addition to improved filtering, so we can now search plants by Latin or common names, and an option to auto-organize imports into collections by plant type for a cleaner outliner. And if you use Plant Factory on Windows, this add-on makes getting those detailed plants into Blender actually easier and faster. Especially with automated materials, this add-on can actually save you a lot of time. The next add-on is called Lazy Forest, which is basically a forest generator in Blender. It uses geometry nodes to scatter a full forest scene with almost no effort. So all the included trees and plants come pre-animated, with swaying grass and rustling leaves out of the box which is awesome I would say for realism. The add-on recently got a big update with version 2, which added some sweet features. You can now create ponds and lakes as part of the environment, and drop in new snowy biome presets for winter seas. In addition to this, you can sprinkle particle effects like floating seeds or dust for extra atmosphere, and you can also take advantage of some performance optimizations that let you handle larger forests more efficiently. Arborea is also a newcomer to the Blender foliage scene, and I would say it is pretty epic. It was created by the environment artist Sweeper3D, and this add-on combines a massive library of over 600 plant assets with smart scattering and procedural tools that can help you build different 3D environments. From photoreal pies to fantasy growing mushrooms, this add-on gives you a great scattering system in addition to the power of GeoNode generators which allows you to grow procedural vines and ivy over your structures. It also allows for quick season toggling and comes with presets for adding with animation, so your trees and bushes can sway naturally with a few clicks. This add-on launched in mid-2025, but it is getting rapid updates. For instance, its latest update introduced a handy leaf removal tool to strip leaves off branches with controls for randomness in addition to height and weight painting and better multi-emitter support for scattering across multiple terrains. I also have to mention Grasswold, which started out as a popular paid add-on known for its realistic grass, weeds, and small plants. And the big news is that Grasswold team made their entire plant asset library free, so you can now download 145 plant species, including grasses, windflowers, moss, ferns, etc. at no cost, which is pretty amazing. Considering these were pro assets with multiple LOD levels and 8K PBR textures, they even allow free assets to be used in commercial projects. To scatter them, Grasswold provides a separate add-on called G-Scatter, which is also free by the way. It makes it easy to paint or distribute the plants in your scene. On a side note, the shift from paid to free happened because the developers pivoted to focus on a new project, which is an AI-driven product visualization platform. So rather than let the library stagnate, they generously opened it for the community. And I would say this is basically a win-win. We get a trove of realistic plant models for free, and Grasswold leaves on via Gscatter, which is a free tool in the community that everyone can use. Last but not least, there is the plant library from BD3D, the developers of Geoscatter. And similar to Grasswold and Gscatter, this library is also free. And it packs over 170 high-quality plant models, covering grasses, flowers, ferns, brushes, and other vegetation types. Essentially, it gives you a ready-made library of natural ground cover plants that you can either append directly or scatter across your scene. And if you have GeoScatter, this is gonna be even better. Because it was designed to work with the GeoScatter ecosystem, the library includes 31 pre-made biomes, which you can scatter in one go using GeoScatter. The assets come in a blend format, with all materials set up, and they are quite detailed, even great for close-up shots. Despite being free, the models are licensed for commercial use as well, so you can use them in any project you want. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these add-ons and asset libraries, you will find all the necessary links in the description. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.